In this video, I'm going to look at how to calculate amounts of substances involved in equations. So because chemical equations essentially tell us the mole ratio between chemicals, we need to work in moles for these calculations. So just a reminder, we're going to use the mass moles MR triangle. And reminder that mass must be in grams. So beware any masses not given in grams. You're going to have to convert that first. And I've included one of those in the examples in this video. So we'll start with uh, this one here. A nice simple one to start with just to get the method established. And then there's a couple more you can try yourselves. Pause the video and then play on for the answers. So calcium carbonate, when it's heated, it decomposes into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And that's known as thermal decomposition. There's the chemical equation for the reaction CaCO3 going to CaO and CO2. So the question is, what mass of carbon dioxide is produced from the thermal decomposition of 1.2 kilos of calcium carbonate? And you'll notice there a reminder of the formula triangle at the bottom and the relative atomic masses for the atoms involved in these chemicals. So for the purpose of the video, I'm colour coding the chemicals involved in the equation just so things stand out a bit more for you till you get the hang of the method. And what's that equation telling us? It's telling us that one mole of calcium carbonate produces one mole of CO2. So we don't need any numbers in front of these chemicals in the balanced equation. And so they are reacting in a one to one to one mole ratio. So the method is really, really simple. Three steps, you can't go wrong. First step, calculate the moles of the known chemical. So in this question, calcium carbonate is the known chemical because we know the mass. We were told in the question we had 1.2 kilos of it to thermally decompose. So the slight catch is just to turn those kilos into grams before we work out the moles. So 1.2 kilos is 1,200 grams divided by the MR of calcium carbonate, which is 100, gives us 12 moles of calcium carbonate. So that's step one, moles of known. Step two, moles of unknown. So we get this from the mole ratio. So there's a one to one ratio between calcium carbonate and CO2. So if we've got 12 moles of calcium carbonate, we're gonna make 12 moles of CO2. And then the third and final thing, we convert the moles of the unknown into the a mass, which is what we've been asked to do, what mass of carbon dioxide is produced. And so that's just moles times MR, 12 times 44, 5 to 8 grams. So really, really simple method. So the second question now, if you want to have a read through this information and then try, try it yourself, pause the video and then play on when you're ready. So there's the equation again, just colour coded. We're only interested in the sodium hydroxide and the chlorine. And the first thing we're going to do is establish, well, what's the, what's the equation telling us? Two moles of sodium hydroxide react with one mole of chlorine. So step one, moles of known. So sodium hydroxide is the known chemical, got 100 grams of it. So divide that by its MR. So that comes out at 2.5. Moles of unknown, well, we're not going to have the same moles this time because it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every mole of sodium hydroxide, we only need half as many moles of Cl2 because of the two-to-one ratio between these two chemicals. So we need to half the 2.5 to get the moles of Cl2. So that comes out at 1.25 moles. And now all we need to do is convert that into grams by multiplying by the MR. So the mass of chlorine is 1.25 multiplied by its MR of 71, 88.75 grams. Final one now. So again, pause the video when you've processed the information, have a go, and then we'll go through the answer together. Equations telling us that one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to make two moles of ammonia. 
So the first thing we're going to do is establish the known chemical ammonia, calculate its moles, so that's 500 mass divided by MR, so 29.412 moles of ammonia. That's how much ammonia we're going to make. So how many moles of nitrogen would be needed? Well, what's the ratio between ammonia and nitrogen? So it's 2 to 1, so we half the ammonia moles to get the nitrogen moles, so that's 14.706. Moles of hydrogen is a little bit trickier. We've got a 2 to 3 ratio between the ammonia and the hydrogen. And if you just think about the numbers in front, this is what I tell my students, the bigger number is in front of the hydrogen. So we're going to multiply by 3 over 2, or 1.5 is what I've done, to get the moles of hydrogen needed. So that's 44.18. Basically, if we've got a bigger number in front of the chemical, we're going to need more moles than a smaller number in front. And then all we need to do now, once we've got the moles, we convert them to mass by moles times MR. So the mass of nitrogen needed is moles times its MR of 28, so 411.768 grams. Mass of hydrogen needed, moles of hydrogen times its MR of 2, so 88.236. So if you can do that, you can do pretty much any calculation like this. So we'll just finish by summarising the method, so three simple steps to success. I'm also going to point out a classic mistake that I see happen far too often, but more about that in a moment. So step one, calculate the moles of the known chemical, so that's the chemical you told the mass for, mass divided by MR. Step two, calculate the moles of the unknown chemical, and you, get, you do that from the mole ratio between the chemicals in the question. Step three, convert the moles of the unknown chemical into mass. So that's moles times MR. So what's this classic mistake? It's when students use the mole ratio more than once. So in this method, this method that I use, the mole ratio is dealt with in step two. And that's the only time it's used. What students sometimes do, I'll use the second question to highlight that. So if you remember, we were given 100 grams of sodium hydroxide. So how many moles is that? Mass over MR, two and a half moles. What students sometimes do is they factor in that two and then they use the mole ratio again in step two. So what they do is they'll say, right, 100 grams of sodium hydroxide, but there's a two in front in the equation. So that's 100 divided by two times the MR and you get 1.25 moles. This method doesn't work if you do that. Okay, so if you stick to the these three steps here and you're only factoring in the, the mole ratio in step two, you can't go wrong.